I have got some ghost stories for you. I come home from the gym and the chairs are all stacked upside down. I'm like a very intricate stack. There was a werewolf on our porch swing holding one of our kittens. The pen was all busted open and there is blood everywhere. There's like somebody standing in the middle of the bed with their finger pushing straight up on the canopy, like a tent pole. But there's nothing there. And I laid in bed like a little kid. I pulled the covers up over my eyes. <laughs> this little boy told paranormal investigators, apparently my grandfather came back from the dead to harass a toddler. <laughs> so that is my ghost story. Hi, and welcome to Haunted AF, the podcast of real ghost stories told by real people. We are your hosts. I'm Julie Fisk. And I'm Rebecca Black. So coming up, we have a ghost story from a zoo, like an actual real functioning zoo. Also a pawn shop ghost. And we're also going to go over all the big spooky spectacle stuff that's coming up this weekend. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, you can see our gorgeous banner. It looks so good. So good. Totally freaking out my cats though. Like they were climbing on the desk, trying to look at it. And then at one point I got up and they were all hiding behind it. You know, I did not think that I would love a life, life life-size version of myself Mm -hmm. as much as I do. And I'm, uh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca's already been licking it. I have been. I'll make out (laughs) with myself here in a little bit. All right. Well, first though, we need to say hello to some of our newest patrons. So hello, Ronnie Mon and Dylan. Dylan says, oh, Dylan's got a message for us. He says, Hey, Julie and Rebecca, I subscribed to your Patreon earlier today. And after listening to the podcast, for a long time. I absolutely love this podcast and listen when I'm at work to get through the shift. So thank you. I've had my fair share of paranormal experiences, but I'm still too shy to share yet. Come on, Dylan. Yeah, we're nice sometimes. Hopefully, (laughs) hopefully one day I'm all the way. Let's see. Hopefully I'll share with you one day. I am all the way in Scotland. So the history slash ghost stories are super interesting over here. Anyways, I hope you both have an awesome day, Dylan. Oh, well, thank you, Dylan. Thank you so much. I still don't know why people would be shy to talk to us. I don't either. We're fun gals. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk to anybody and about anything. So really there's nothing to fear. Um, by the way, remember you can actually catch our weekly pregames and tons of exclusive content at patreon.com slash haunted AF. Um, oh, we also heard back from Diana. So she's the one who sent the story about her dad last week. Mm -hmm. That was so wonderful. He stepped on that train and never looked back. Like, like we cried. Mm -hmm. I cried every time I read it. Every time I had to say it out loud. You sent me a text message while you were editing that episode. You're like, damn it. I cried again. Yeah, I did. I did. It was ridiculous. Uh, but she says, thank you. You shared my dad's story so beautifully. It actually got me all emotional, but in a good way. Uh, it was the first time I've ever heard somebody else say it. And it was a really cool experience. Plus he would have loved Rebecca's segue. You two are the best happy fall y'all. And that's from Diana. What was your segue? I have no idea. Now I had to go back and, and have a another listen to it. I'm like, I'm always paranoid. It's insensitive. (laughs) Cause it usually is. I know that's me. Insensitive Sally. No, I don't mean you. No, I am. Both of us. Both of us. It's always something. All right. So this story comes from Kieran. So here is my Ouija board story. One Halloween, myself and friends of mine, we had rented a hotel room and we decided we're going to party. We're going to have fun. We had a few drinks. We had some food. Well, I thought it would be a great idea to bring the Ouija board. Well, we all got in a little circle. You know, we started to mess around and halfway in the session, one of my friends had had recently lost her dad. And she asked the question, is my dad okay? All of our cell phones are on the table in the corner of the room, but her specific cell phone vibrated and flew off the table immediately after she asked that question. We don't know if that was a good sign or a bad sign, but at that moment, everybody jumped up and huddled in one corner. And that was the first and last time that I ever messed with the Ouija board. Yeah, if anything, don't mess with a Ouija board because no. it'll make any sort of random thing that happens afterwards right. seem completely demonic. Yes. And I did ask her, um, you know, did someone text or call? Was it actually the phone? And she said, yeah. no, that okay. there was no message Nothing. or, or hmm. anything. Yeah, but boy, I miss hotel parties. <laughs> 
I I've miss... ever been to a hotel party. Oh my gosh. That's totally, that's all we did. And that's high what school. we're going to do. Spooky spectacle this spooky weekend. Spectacle. It's going to be hotel party y'all. A two person. Ho- <laughs> this is good. This is gonna get so actually, ridiculous. No, no, no. We're actually gonna have like a little sleepover yes. type situation, just as like how we brag about what our podcast is. Yes. Maybe we should tell ghost stories. Oh my god, <laughs> that's all we do. I'll that's be, all we do. I'll bring a flashlight when we get to the dark <laughs> and hold it over our faces. The only problem is that we've told so many ghost stories now that half the time they're not scary. No, not I mean, all. it's like maybe one in fifty actually scares me and sticks with me right. anymore. Yeah. Um, I think it's more the gross stories that we tell now. They're <laughs> really good to and we're me. getting to you now yeah which we're, we're getting pretty good <laughs> yeah. at those okay. too we're getting a good uh, collection of those on patreon you know, maybe that'll be a spinoff podcast just gross stories i'm totally down i for am that. i actually am too yeah the goal will be dry heaves every week dude that's that's <laughs> easy for me to get to dry <laughs> heave level like it's so easy for me <laughs> i'll listen back and i'll hear that <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it that's like success all right. Our next story comes from Lisa. Lisa says, I was married to a man for over 20 years. He was my best friend, but lacked the good husband department, but lacked in the good husband department, not in a horrible way. He just never wanted to grow up or be responsible, which I found exciting at first. I mean, bars and slot machines are okay, but not as a lifestyle. No. Nope. Totally understand you, Lisa. Uh, So as I grew older, got more responsible and matured, he did not. Well, we ended up getting separated in 2015. I moved on with my career and he stayed the same and his health worsened. He had COPD. He remained my best friend though, even after I met my current husband. In January of 2019, Jim was placed on hospice care. I had just moved to Nevada, but Jim said he would haunt me when he died. And I said, I hope you do. Well, I mean, that's sweet, but also I don't know that you should invite that in early on. And does that make her current husband jealous? Oh, that's a good question. I think that would upset me. Yeah. Dave would not be cool with that. No. Okay. So he passed away that March that morning. I dreamt that I was walking down a beautiful street lined with brick houses. I saw Jim standing on one of the porches looking good. Like he did when we first met, I said, hi there. You look fan fantastic. And he replied, I had to get better. So everyone could go home. His brothers and sisters were with him when he passed. Oh, we walked for a while talking about things. I can't recall, but when we got to the end of the road, there was a blackness. I mean, complete nothingness. He said, this is where I have to go now. I love you. We hugged and I woke up immediately feeling a strong sense of peace and things I can't explain. I got up and called Jim's cousin who hadn't heard any news overnight. Less than an hour later, I received a call that Jim had passed away that morning when I'd had my dream. I know he came to say goodbye to let me know he's okay. And that was the most powerful experience I've ever had. Lisa. Wow, Lisa. That's amazing. No kidding. Okay. Not to totally change the subject, but. You found it. If we, that doesn't jolt you like right out of we were, wherever you're sitting. But we were just talking about awkward segues yeah. going from like really sweet side stories into or fu- something funny into a dead animal. Yeah. So, um, but we, no, I'm playing that again. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, somebody else wrote to us and was like, you have to find that because oh my that is the absolute best. <laughs> Um, dead pet of the week theme song. And thank I, you everyone. I have to agree. So this is from Sarah who says, I just wanted to drop you an email and say, I love binging and listening to you guys. I'm from the North of England and live actually on Pendle Hill. Yes. Where the witches were. Oh, nice. Apologies for my accent. I'm quite Northern and definitely and death not elo governor type oh. more starks and game of thrones ha huh? starks and game of thrones i still think they sounded pretty i do too good, is though. that not the same you've kept me company on pram walks with my small ginger person on dog walks commutes to work and now back out on my runs as i drag my ass or arse around arse. the field trying to be a fit mom lots of love sarah so this is sarah's story so i have a little story i used to have a West Highland White Terrier. We call them a Westie. I'm not sure if they do in America. Um, He was called Angus and I got him for my 21st birthday. I'm significantly older than that now, but still. He was my little dude, my little man, been together through everything, a couple of breakups, the usual. 
So I used to be a emergency 999 police dispatcher. Um, and one of my night shifts, Angus was having a sleepover at my parents' house. Um, so it wasn't on, on his own. And I went on my break, must have been about three o'clock. Sat on my phone, just having a bit of downtime, scrolling through my pictures, had a look at some of my memories of little Angus, just having a look, my little dude. And I felt something underneath my elbow, like a, a jolt or a nudge. And, and that's what he used to do. He'd snuggle underneath your elbow, nudge you underneath, sort of his way of getting attention, like, hello, you're ignoring me, pay me attention. And he'd wiggle in there and have a little snuggle. Again, didn't think too much of it. Um, finished my night shift, got to about half six. And I had a call from my mum, not on the emergency line, I must admit. Um, just, she was beside herself. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, we've just got up and Angus, Angus has passed away. He's, he's gone to doggy heaven. He's gone across the rainbow bridge. Devastated. I was thinking about it. I was like, oh my God. That little snuggly thing that I felt on my break. My little man was coming to say goodbye. Oh, right in the fields. Oh my God. Thank you so, so much, Sarah. Do you ever do that? Like where you'll just be looking at pictures of your animals? No. All the time. Okay. No, oh my God. Like all that. I was like, I can't even believe you asked me that question. <laughs> I have more pictures of my animals on my phone than anything else in life. <gasps> And I don't care. I'm not embarrassed at all. No, like, I, you may look at me like I'm a crazy person, but they need 25 selfies just like I do. When she was first talking about looking at pictures of her, of Angus, I thought that maybe Angus had passed, yeah. you know, but he had it. She was just looking at pictures yeah. of him. Oh, that's really sweet. All right. Our next story comes from Viv. I used to manage a pawn shop about an hour east of Dallas. Before we purchased it, it belonged to someone who committed suicide in the back of the store. We frequently saw a tall shadow walking around that we often mistook for coworkers. We'd call out to them only to be met with silence. Some days we would hear loud crashing sounds from parts of the warehouse, but when we checked to see what fell, nothing was ever out of place. Our security motion sensors would go off almost nightly, but we never saw anyone on the premises. We would check the cameras the next morning and see weird things. In one video, you could see a rack full of fishing poles with dangling sales tags. Some of the tags were spinning, some were swaying, and some were perfectly still. Oof. Didn't make sense. Things happened so frequently that we started using the buddy system to drop off inventory because the light sensor sometimes wouldn't register and turn on until you were well into the warehouse. Oh, that would suck. You're just yeah. walking and waiting and you're oh, like, any no. minute now, any I minute now. I hate those stupid sensors. Yeah, I do too. Uh, one of the new employees first learned about the previous owner while helping me in the back room. He said, God, it even smells like death back here, then doubled over in pain. He said that the air had gotten knocked out of him like he'd been punched. I said, yeah, don't be disrespectful. I hope he kicks your ass next time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Herman never blatantly disrespected or hurt anyone else, though. Herman. I think he just liked keep being acknowledged. I think he just liked being acknowledged. Love the show. I binged the entire podcast about thrice now, and I've told all my friends and family about it. Viv. Viv. Was that the first time Viv mentioned Herman? I think I so. Herman, Herman, the, the pawn ghost. shop yeah. ghost. That's awesome. Okay. So this next story comes from Miriam. Hi, Julie and Rebecca. My name is Miriam and I'm the IT manager at Cheyenne Mountain Zoo in Colorado Springs, Colorado. This zoo was founded in 1926 and is located on a mountainside above Colorado Springs, which makes it a nice and quiet place, dark at night and away from city noises and distractions. So you can hear all the animals at night and sometimes other things that occur late at night as well. As most others in IT, I am here working late night for some server updates or can be on call for after hours emergencies. Usually it's our caretaker or our security staff who'll call me in the middle of the night with any electrical outages or IT emergencies. Well, last September, our vet hospital manager, as well as our caretaker here, sent me a text asking for help. Now, it was close to midnight, so I was already asleep, and that one message didn't wake me up. The next morning, I noticed and immediately wrote her back and told her that she can call and wake me up if she needs so we can get it resolved the same night. And she said she would have. 
However, here's what happened. That night at about 11.45 p.m., our PA or announcement system started playing announcements by itself across the zoo grounds. The weird thing was it wasn't one of our normal announcements, which is like a 30 minute warning, 10 minute, and then the zoo is now closed message. She said this was a new message, something about good night zoo message. <laughs> now I've been at the zoo for over a decade and I was not familiar with the good night zoo announcement. So she texted me that night to see if I was still awake, if I could access it remotely so she wouldn't have to go walk down to the administration building, which is one of our old historic buildings from the 20s at close to midnight. When I didn't respond, she got out of bed, got dressed and walked down to the administration building where the PA system is located. Meanwhile, the PA system has been playing this message on repeat over and over again for about 20 minutes so far. When she walked into the admin building, no one else was in the building and the message just stopped playing all by itself. She looked around and went, nope, and left on and went straight back to her apartment on grounds and stayed there for the rest of the night. So she said she didn't call to wake me up since it stopped and it stayed off all night. And then she wanted to talk to me about it the next day. Now, the next morning when she told me about that abnormal message being good night zoo announcement, neither of us were familiar with it. I'm very familiar with our PA system, which has an online portal and automated programming with times of when our announcement plays. And that message is not loaded on the PA system. So I was very curious about what this message was and how it played. It's not connected to our servers or our shared drives or anything like that. So where did it get this message from? And then I remembered it had a backup SD card in case the system goes offline or if you need to like manually play something all of a sudden. So I pulled the SD card, which had our typical 30 minute, 10 minute and closed announcements. Then it had a historical folder and inside that was the Goodnight Zoo message. After asking around, I learned that it was a very old education program that we once had, but it hadn't been used in the decade plus that I'd been here. So I called her caretaker and told her that I didn't find the file on the online system, which is good. However, I did find it on the SD card on a historic folder, which could have been manually played somehow with buttons, um, but someone or something had to push those buttons on the controller, then push to turn it off. I told her it was either a really weird electrical glitch that had the most perfect timing ever mm -hmm. or ghosty ghost. Now, the second part to this is, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of weird things that happen in the zoo at night, especially in the admin building, but also other buildings since it's such an old property. Um, we have doors slammed shut, apparitions have been seen, and voices have been heard. Typically, we blame Spencer Penrose. He originally started the zoo with his private collection of animals. He built a whole huge five-star resort down below us, and he's even buried up at the shrine um, above us called Will Rogers Shrine above the zoo. Uh, we typically blame Spencer for all the weird quirks and unexplainable things that happen at the zoo as a joke, even if it's just a weird electrical glitch. I'm like, darn it, Spencer. So I just checked it up to that and didn't think much more of it. But when I went to sleep that night, I had a dream where I saw it all play out. Our caretaker heard the announcement, walked down to the admin building, and inside was not Spencer Penrose, but it was Carlotta, our mountain taper, who had just passed away the day prior and playing that message, goodnight zoo, as a goodbye, which is a nice resolution, but we'll never truly know what happened that night and whether it was Carlotta, Spencer, or someone or something else trying to get our attention. No, thank you, Miriam. So, wow. first of all, do you know what a mountain taper is? I do not. Okay, see, I thought when she said that, I was like, well, maybe a mountain, is that somebody who like works in the nursery? Mm -hmm. Like, so no, this Rebecca is what a mountain taper is. Oh, it's an actual animal. It's an animal. It looks like a cross between an anteater and like a hippo. A, and, or a pig or, or something. something. Yeah, something like that. But even then I'm like, well, he doesn't have any fingers. He's got a weird it, nose. No opposable like, thumb. No. <laughs> How would he be able to press or she, forgive me, Carlotta, um, maybe they use the weird little elephant nose to make it happen. Oh, look, he's even maybe, got little or a tusk, a tusk. Two. Yeah. So um, I'm sorry. I like cracked up so hard that when I realized like, oh, she's talking about an animal, not a person, not a person. I thought it was a woman that worked at the zoo. Yeah. Same here. So um, how amazing though, would that be to work at a haunted zoo? I know. I'm like, how has this not been made a movie yet? First yes. of all, the Spencer Primrose, like the name does not get better than that. No, right? that's excellent. Right. And then the zoo's on the side of a mountain. I'm like, come on. Yeah. So we'll actually post a link to the zoo itself. So you guys can check that out. And we'll post some pictures of um, tapers. <laughs> I was like, Carlita. <laughs> Carlotta. Carlita. Carlotta. Sorry. Carlotta, the, the mountain taper. The mountain taper. That's sweet, though. How do we not learn about mountain tapers in school? Uh, I don't know. Because that's a jacked up looking little totally animal. Weird little dude. <laughs> 
Uh, anyways, guys, don't forget, we got this spooky spectacle Yay! kicking off in Grand Perry this Friday. Oh my gosh. We Wait. are so excited. Um, like, Hang on. I got to show you what? all the crap that we've got. So oh, first good. of all, the we've sign got, is amazing. Here's our new sign that we're going to have. Amazing. Look, we have some <gasps> cute I little. Love, I want to put one on my car. You could take that if I'm you want. Gonna. So we've got that and we've got. <gasps> I love it in black. Isn't it great? Oh, I love it so much. On today, I'm sure it's cash only yeah. $20. $20, make you holla. <laughs> we've got some candy we're going to give away. And here's the big thing. We're going to have lots of audio equipment because we want to record your stories. And look at this, Rebecca. I got look at you fancy pants. Like, this is called a shotgun mic. I know. So, well, you just pointed at people. Yeah. So they, we can like get stories. Do you hear that? Yeah. That's hello, a spooky story. So phallic in my face. <laughs> Yeah, let me turn that shit off. So yes, <laughs> we've got so much fun. We have stuff planned. Yay! Yay! Um, so that's actually going to be at the convention center Friday. Oh wait, no. Oh my god, I said. I all... don't know where I'm at. Did we say? Oh, you said all the things. That's I said fine. All the things. That's fine. There's no need for me. We're good. Spooky <laughs> spectacle, y'all, or spooky testicle, whatever you want to call it. I totally said all of your stuff. I'm so sorry. No, don't feel um, bad. Uh, but, uh, we're going to post some links to all the other haunted stuff that they have in Granbury, like the, um, opera house and the haunted prison, the old prison right there on the square. That's so cool. Isn't there a tour down there too? Oh yeah. There's that's a bunch of, of ghost tours. So we'll post some links to that stuff. The nut house I think is still closed, unfortunately, oh, boo. which is such a bummer. I know I called today hoping that maybe somebody would be there, but it looks like that's closed. And for those of you who aren't going to be able to come, don't worry. We're going to take, we're going to do everything we can to include everyone. We'll try to do some Facebook live um maybe some tiktok lives sure uh we're gonna try all the technology and social media stuff that we usually screw up so <laughs> it'll be but like i don't know at least this time i feel like we'll we'll be sort of in a place where we're focusing more on that um, instead of the podcast part right yeah, yeah. i don't know Vegetable, it's, but then we're also gonna be drinking so who knows? yeah <laughs> this is the two of us focusing on anything it's like God knows where this is going to happen. I but. am actually, I'm gonna, I'm not going to lie. I am actually excited that this, these two days are technically two and a half, three days, whatever. I will be able to just focus on nothing other than haunted AF. Yes. I'm spooky pumped. stories. Yeah. Like, it's just going to be fun. We're just going to have a fun ass time, y'all. Alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> Taking pictures with Ouija people we boards. don't know. No, we're staying the fuck away from Ouija. What if I just brought a little tiny no. one? Like a little cute one or a handmade one from home and <laughs> made one. I'll just print one out off the internet. We'll probably end up drawing one on a napkin at Waffle House you or something. You know we're going to do it. No, I am not doing. Uh, <laughs> I, I got enough shit following me around. Like, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. But we're going to pull all the stories we can and then we're going to share them all on the next Haunted AF. <laughs> <laughs>